I've seen some really bizarre stuff on TikTok, but over the past year, one of the more fascinating trends I've noticed is a bunch of current teens wishing that they had been teenagers during the years 2013 or 2014, or just romanticizing those years in general. I miss those days back in 2013 when everyone had blue eyes, which at first I thought it was a bit ridiculous because why would you even say that 2013 was like four years ago? Then. I realized it's been a decade. And the more that I thought about going back and looking at all that stuff that I experienced as a teenager in 2013, I thought it could be a little bit of fun. So today, if you will, I'll be scanning my head card. Before we get into the video though, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, ThreadUp. Some of you guys might remember, I've worked with them before. They're an online consignment and thrift store. I really like it because it makes shopping secondhand a lot easier because you can shop by size, item, brand, or color, and there's new items every day. It's like the perfect combination between the ease of online shopping, but you also get the perks of good deals and a reduced environmental impact that you get from thrifting. I find the clothes that I get from there by searching keywords like knitwear or plaid skirt, where I ended up with this cool like semi-cropped sweater and also this like long plaid skirt. I've been very into skirts for some reason this summer. I bought three of them. Before you say anything though, they're very different vibes. You'll see in a second. Like this one's a lot more short and gauzy. Like it's more wear to a concert because it's cute, but also comfy and also made of that like soft frilly material that makes you want to like jump around and dance. Versus the other two, I feel like are more proper. Like I'm going to go saunter over to the grocery store and get a basket and fill it with produce. I also picked up the longer style ones just because they're great for going from day to night when it gets cooler. The black skirt I got such a good deal on. It was originally $48 and I got it for $14.99. And I also got this free people blouse that was originally $159 that I got for $48.99. I really like the pattern on this one. It's got like little horses on it. Don't call me a horse girl or do. Maybe I am. And the last thing I ended up picking up was brown pants, which I just feel like brown pants kind of go with everything. If you liked any of the stuff that I picked up, Thread Up actually has a new feature where you can see what I picked as well as some similar options. If you're interested, you can shop my picks with my link below and use code Casey for an extra 40% off your first order instead of the usual 30%. Thanks again to Thread Up for sponsoring. Definitely check them out if you're interested, but otherwise let's get back into the video. In my very serious research, I ended up finding a Buzzfeed quiz that was written about this exact topic that also happened to be written three days into 2023. She was excited, but it was supposed to go over the biggest trends of the year, so I thought, why not check it out, get a bit of a refresher. For some reason though, this quiz starts off with Honey Boo Boo, and it feels like an extremely emotionally charged question. Like, do I hate this baby? I mean, I don't think I do. She seems nice. She's also a baby. But a lot of this quiz is just asking about what you think about boat shoes or adult onesies. How about kale? Before randomly asking us about Emblem 3. <laughs> Which I get technically makes sense because Chloe, their hit song came out that year, but just why them? Smiling, giggling, and strumming that guitar as if they don't open this song with the most ridiculous lyric I've ever heard in my life. I know your sister turns everyone on. Like out of all the music we got in 2013, that year we got Art Pop, Beyonce self-titled. There was also Taylor Swift's Red Era. Loving him was red, 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 eh, 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 eh. My hair is red. Which she christened with a very charming sit down seance. And I hate to say it because this man is so annoying, but 2020 vision, phenomenal work. Obviously Lady Gaga, Taylor and Beyonce routinely get their flowers, but men do not make albums like this anymore. He doesn't even make albums like this anymore. Everyone's on a goddamn farmer in the wilderness these days. Get back in the studio. Solar power exempt though. This is a solar power hate free zone, Lord. I love you. You can stay on that damn beach as long as you please. We also got Get Lucky this year, and let me tell you this much. When I was driving to math tutoring, I was having a blast. It was like the perfect song to dance with your grandma to. Get that walker and come over here, Beth. It's time to dance. It's like the legend of the penis. Now, when it came to the albums that Tumblr could not physically be normal about this year, there were a lot of them. I think the biggest one, though, was definitely AM by the Arctic Monkeys. People were writing on cigarettes. You know what's the worst part about this photo, though? 2013 me probably would have reblogged it. It's like so symbolic because the Arctic monkeys smoke cigarettes and that's like the track list for their out. <laughs> you are a dork. Lord's Pure Heroine also came out this year, which if you're curious on how that album was received at the time, I can just direct you to one of the most depressing comment sections on YouTube, which happens to be the one for the ribs video. It's like if you took those TikTok slideshows that have Scott Street playing in the background and it's always really sad poems about girlhood and growing up and things changing, and you dialed that up to like 
a thousand. I can promise you nothing good is going on over there. If you're having a bad day, do not go down there. Something else I've noticed beyond TikToks wishing that it was 2013 again, so Niall Horn was like 19 wearing basketball jerseys again, is a lot of people will say, pop music or just music in general was so much better in 2013, which no, it wasn't. It, it really wasn't. If we do a side by side, which granted the 2023 one isn't year end, but we kind of get a gist for it. There's like the same level of good stuff versus Dookie on the top 10. Like, yes, I can agree as it was, was a little bit overplayed on the radio, but in comparison to 2013, let me give you a bit of an idea on what it was like sitting in a car. Let's start it off with Pink wailing through our speakers at full volume. Lovely thing to listen to at nine in the morning. After that, how about we have a little bit of radio Radioactive by Imagine Dragons. And you know what? Let's go to the other station. They're also playing Radioactive by Imagine Dragons. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more loud and abrasive or creepy, I mean, it's 2013. It's the modern year. Like, yeah, there's a lot of bad TikTok music, but we also had not only blurred lines, but what does a fox say? When it comes to internet culture though, there were like two main wolves you could choose from. You could either go with Acacia Brindley and the quality blogs, which I'm not joking, the whole thing about them was it was just girls with DSLRs taking high quality photos of random items. And these things got tens of thousands of notes. Like you would just scroll through these blogs and it was just high quality photos of soap and perfume. I forgot just how easy it was to get internet club back then. The other wolf you could choose from was the Joanna Kutcha, Elizabeth Jane Bishop, and Charlie Barker wolf. Whether you knew these girls or not, you saw them everywhere online. And your feed was either like really pale, blown out photos of things like milk, or broody, foggy photos of nature and cigarettes, and you have the XX or daughter playing in the background of your Tumblr blog. And maybe one of those photos where someone's wearing an animal mask and there's some cheesy quote written under it. Guys, you don't understand. I used to think this shit was so cool. No matter which wolf you ended up choosing though, there were some general, we'll call them items of aesthetic that everybody loved no matter what subsection of the internet you were in. Succulents were a huge one, I killed so many of them in high school. Needlessly expensive water was also a really popular one too, which it's funny seeing the water talk stuff trending on TikTok right now because it definitely reminds me so much of that like Voss trend on Tumblr when people would shove an entire produce section into a bottle. We also can't forget about box water. They were always in those flat lays. Of course, strategically placed beside the American Apparel scrunchie that you just spent 12 Canadian dollars on. And unfortunately, I don't have any personal Instagram photos from 2013 to show you guys mainly because I was like obsessed with having a good feed back then, so I would constantly delete stuff. But I think this one from 2014 really captures the vibe very well. So much so that I am incredibly embarrassed to be showing this. Oh my God, it's so bad. It's like a visual checklist for I spent too much time on the internet. Like girl, we get it. You listen to Sky Ferreira. I do miss that tote bag though. It was a great bag. American Apparel was huge back then though. And listen, I actually think that their clothes from that time aged a lot better than somebody else's. Oh my god. Wild for the night. Stay weird. Too sassy for you. I love you. To the moon and back. Gangsta rap me. <laughs> oh, did it now? The hood rat things in question, by the way, was buying frozen yogurt at the mall and then using the empty carton to perform the cup song in the food court. <laughs> As seen before, Alexa Chung's It definitely ran Tumblr, but John Green also was running that site like the Navy. You could not scroll Tumblr without seeing some sort of quote from Looking for Alaska or The Fault in Our Stars. I remember reading Looking for Alaska at that time in my life being like, I will never read anything as deep and intellectual as this ever again. Like, get a grip. Were they a bit overhyped? Definitely. But they weren't a grift. That's reserved for the Rectus Journal. To this day, I think this could be one of the greatest grifts of our time. Let me walk you through the Rectus Journal experience if you don't know what it is. You would pay like 30 bucks for this book, which had prompts like, rub dirt on this page. And the crazy thing is that we'd actually do it. It was goddamn genius. There are actually some really cool videos on YouTube of people going through their fully completed Rectus Journal, which most of them you can notice that they kind of take the prompts and make them a lot more interesting, but I was not one of those people. I don't even know where mine ended up. The best part about it though, is they like branded this laziness as like trying to live more recklessly. Like at the beginning of the book, there was this warning. During the process of this book, you will get dirty. You may find yourself covered in paint, 
or any other number of foreign substances, you will get wet. You may be asked to do things you question. You may grieve for the perfect state that you found the book in. You may begin to see creative destruction everywhere. You may begin to live more recklessly. Or you may begin to realize that you just wasted $30. When it comes to different apps and platforms that people miss from this era, I definitely say that Vine is the biggest one. But one that I feel like I never see people talk about that I used to love back then was 8Tracks. If you don't know what it is, the premise was just a website that was all different playlists that people could make, and the only requirement was that each playlist had to have at least 8 tracks on it. It was such a great platform for discovering new music. There were tons of bands and artists that I found at the time specifically from 8Tracks. And it was also really funny because at this time, One Direction of five sauce were just at their peak so you'd have like normal titled playlists mixed in with stuff like falling asleep with harry for shits and giggles i decided to go back to look at my profile and i forgot that in the corner you could see like the main tags for stuff that you used to put playlists under and my tags on my profile were indie sad and sleep guys i was so fine back then i have no idea how to subtly bring up tampon girl she definitely falls under pop culture but there's like no way to just like ease into talking about her if you don't know who tampon girl is i definitely say that she really paved the way for all those people who lick toilet seats and ice cream buckets or fondle chicken breasts weirdly for tiktok except instead of doing those things she ate a tampon and then posted it on the internet. Which raises the question, how far would you go to get noticed by Ariana Grande? Why is Ariana Grande even famous? Or should I say, well known? Not for eating my own used tampon, that's for damn sure. On the more tame end when it comes to like internet culture stuff, this was the year of the Harlem Shake, which I guess you could argue is kind of like that time's version of like a TikTok dance, but it wasn't really like a coordinated choreographed dance trend. I would think of it as more of a loosely calculated group jiggle, and people did not mess around about the Harlem Shake. This was very serious business. People were going on the intercom in high schools, setting this shit up. Good morning, students. Please remember to come down to the forum after school today for the joint Harlem Shake that we'll be posting on our school's YouTube channel. Honestly, looking back, it's kind of like a cool time capsule seeing all those videos now. But I have to say, if there's like one thing that stands out to me as like a favorite thing that happened on the internet in 2013, it was the Hatsune Miku and Domino's ad. This was like the Lisa Rinna M&M of 2013. What had happened is people found this Japanese ad for Domino's and Hatsune Miku, which was for some reason featuring this guy with the strongest American accent I've ever heard. Hello everyone, I'm Scott, president of Domino's Pizza. Domino's. Have some fun with Miku. And this new collaborative app was produced. Work it, make it, do it, makes us harder, better, faster, stronger. Okay, cringe and funniness aside, they are a cute little duo. Journals also came out this year, which you might be wondering why I'm not mentioning this with all the other music at the beginning. It's because this was a bit of a different release. Every time I go back to this one, I think this is one of his best albums. Like, why didn't it do that well? And then I remember this was released during his Bizzle era. If you aren't aware of what the Bizzle era is, it's the period of time where Justin Bieber dubbed his rap persona Bizzle. And it happened to be during this time period that he was just acting like a gigantic douchebag. We got him peeing in a mop bucket. He also tried to pull his own Tanacon when he got snubbed at the Grammys, where he tried to set up this live stream while the Grammys were going on to try to pull viewership away from them. But then the live stream didn't end up working and the Grammys ended up drawing the second biggest audience in 20 years. And of course, who can forget Amsterdam, where Justin ended up going to the Anne Frank house where he wrote in the guest book, and Frank would have been a believer. As expected, people lost their minds over this. But the crazy thing is, the people that defended him ended up being the museum themselves and Anne Frank's stepsister. The museum ended up saying he was interested in Anne Frank's life, and that for us is the most important thing. And Anne Frank's stepsister ended up saying she probably would have been a fan. Why not? She was a young girl and she liked film stars and music. He also abandoned a monkey during this era, which like, what? He ended up buying this like exotic monkey and he tried to travel to Germany with it and they ended up withholding it because he didn't have the right papers. And instead of getting those papers to get his monkey back, he just left it in Germany. On the bright side though, the monkey now is in a zoo in Germany, which I feel like is a better situation for the monkey. But because of all these things, people hated Justin this year. I remember this clip of Miley going viral because of her expression when she had to give him an award. And Taylor especially was shady as hell to them. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Justin winning the Milestone Award so young? Can we have another question? This was back when music awards were exciting though. Like shit happened. Specifically this year at the Billboard Music Awards, Miguel like almost decapitated someone. <laughs> 
Then after doing that, did an interview with her. Unfortunately, we met under not the best circumstances. Right, but... right. You're a big fan of Miguel before he before he jumped on you? I adorn him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you still adorn him, even though even though you've got an ice pack on your elbow. Uh-huh. I know a lot of people are gonna look at this clip and think, oh my god, she folded on an opportunity. But hear me out. I kinda get it. Cause listen, if Zayn Malik nearly killed me, I forgive him too, okay? I'm sorry. Maybe Miguel is her Zayn Malik. Who am I to judge? There was also the Miley and Robin Thicke performance at the VMAs. How many people were scared of that man? I don't think I'll ever be able to fully wrap my head around why Robin Thicke released blurred lines and why he acted the way he did when he was promoting it. Like, why couldn't he just continue with the bike business? That was a good song. Why did you have to get off the bike and become the biggest creep ever? Like for what? A number one single and being a judge on The Masked Singer? Honestly, going through all this stuff, it made me realize just how chaotic 2013 culture really was. It definitely is a bit strange though seeing people treat those years in high school as like the 80s on TikTok. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those videos on TikTok where it's like class of the 1980s and it's a bunch of like videos from people in the school at that time. And they've now started to do that for years like 2013 and 2014. But for some reason, the footage looks like the exact same quality as the 80s. And somebody actually brought this up in one of the videos saying, bro, we had iPhones that why the quality looked like the 90s to which we got a very thorough answer from the creator definitely a bit strange but overall this is kind of fun to look back on obviously this is seen through a bit more of a personal lens it kind of reminds me of like the fifth harmony and one direction videos where i think it'd be really cool if there's anything i missed that you guys put in the comment section down below but hopefully you enjoyed the video i had a lot of fun with this one if you did enjoy it feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel it really helps me out you can also follow me outside of youtube on twitch we're just about to start the quarry right now as well as twitter instagram spotify goodreads all that stuff i'll put in the pinned comment down below remember you can shop my picks from thread up with the link below and use code Casey for an extra 40% off your first order. Definitely take advantage of that if you're interested, but otherwise really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.